The North Carolina Tar Heels check in at number 11 at our rankings of the top 25 wing rotations in the country. Riley, you had them at number six uh, in the country individual rankings. I did not rank North Carolina in my top 25 wing rotations. You want to know why? Go on and tell the people why, Ralph. Because there are two wings, and that is not enough for you to be a top 25 wing rotation, particularly when I'm not as high on one of those wings. Yeah. Uh, but we, we, we'll get to that in a second. Um, Drake Powell's the headliner here. Highly regarded freshman. I am very high on Drake Powell. I think he's awesome. I know you do as well. Yes, Drake Powell is already my second favorite player on this team, and he hasn't played a minute for the Tar Heels. I think he's going to be great immediately. I know the offense isn't all the way there yet, but he, the potential exists for him to immediately be the best defender on the Tar Heels, and I, that includes Seth Trimble. Um, it's hard for me. Like I rank them six because I think the, the star power of Drake Powell is so high, and Cade Tyson at minimum should be a rock solid like fourth option in the starting lineup in my opinion um it's also tough to like like Seth, both said triple and ian jackson are kind of wings but we did consider them guards for our for our we for did. our ranking so i can't double dip i can't double dip if we did i'd have them probably even have them higher probably would have had i would have ra- i would have ranked them i would have ranked them <laughs> <laughs> but you know it's the perk i got to, i got to have my team be second in the backcourt ranking so i won't complain but yeah drake is uh i mean he I believe you will see some secondary rim protection because he's got like a six eleven seven foot wingspan, great athleticism, tremendous instincts, and he can he can be like a lockdown defender on ball as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's rare that you see a, a freshman make an impact both as as both as much on and off ball. But I think Drake has that potential. His game reminds me a little bit of Stefan Castle, and could sound a little bit of a stretch until you see that. Powell has been rising up draft boards recently. I think Bleacher Report had him at number five in their most recent mock. So I'm like, okay, it's not that lofty to compare him, compare him to Stefan Castle because on offense, there's there's a little bit of like the point wing type skill set. I wouldn't mm-hmm. say he'll ever be, you know, broadcasting himself as a true point guard like Castle was, but he can make plays out of ball screens. His EYBL tape is full of him making reads. It's full of him att- getting downhill off of screens and just like punching one on dudes. Uh, and his shot has been improving a lot as well. So that's the big question mark for him is uh, mm-hmm. his re- release is a little bit slow. I'd say the form is a little bit unorthodox. Uh, goes in at a decent clip, but yeah, it, it remains to be seen. I would say that's the biggest question. Like, can it go in consistently enough against D1 defenders? He's a really, really good all-around player. Great two-way guy, right? I, I think the shooting questions have me pause a little bit when projecting him to be like an immediate star, particularly because he's who he's competing with for playing time. Like there's a great chance he, you know, he's a bench guy for mm-hmm. North Carolina and having Drake Powell come off your bench is a great thing. If you're North Carolina and the Tar Heels, it means you have some really good guys ahead of him. Um, but it does make me wonder the kind of impact that he can have this season, right? Like I think the NBA draft stuff is warranted because of his potential, not necessarily because of the production he's going to have at the college level. But we'll see. Very, I I I, yeah, I love his I mean, game. I love what his game can be. Yeah, I do as well. And I I mean, I've already shared what I think he I, that I believe he will be in UNC's closing lineups, even if he doesn't yeah. start. I've said that in other UNC videos. But yeah, that's impacts why I'm so high on him. Uh, but I know you're a Cade Tyson skeptic. Do you want to make your case against my beloved Belmont transfer? Who was the guy who transferred to UNC from William and Mary? What was his name? It was Justin Christian Pierce. Justin Pierce. We're not about to compare Justin Kate Pierce well, to well, Justin Pierce. Come the, on. Well, who who was the other guy too that year? Uh, Christian Keeling, Charleston. Christian Southern Keeling, Justin. UNC. Yeah. So they come to mind with me with Kate Tyson because both of those guys were highly regarded at lower levels. And we're, we're scorers, we're shooters, we're efficient players at that level that we expected to come in and produce at a, not necessarily the same level, but certainly a high level for North Carolina in big roles. And they were immediately overwhelmed. We're not ready for ACC athleticism. We're not ready for ACC size, ACC length. Kate Tyson is a terrific shooter. And everybody's ready to say like, oh, he's Brady Manic. That's awesome. And that's why UNC went out and got him because 
Hubert Davis's system. He has found like if I have a stretch four that can shoot, it opens everything else up. And they went out and got K Tyson to be that guy. I think he's going to struggle with the ACC length and athleticism, quite frankly. And I think he'll still be a fine shooter, but I don't think a fine shooter is enough to override defensive questions, uh, other offensive limitations that you have. Like I, I think he's going to come in and be, let's say, at best, a net neutral. Ralph, I'm going to have to put my uh, my judge wig on and break out the gavel and put you on trial here. Can you name another William & Mary basketball player besides Justin Pierce? Time's up, no. How about Charleston Southern? Charleston Southern players you got in your bag aside from Christian Keeling? None, none that come to mind off the top of my head. Okay, that's interesting. Um, let me see. Do I have a notepad? I'm just seeing if I, I want to make sure I have my notes uh, in front of me to to make sure I'm marking this down. Okay. Do you do you want to know um, who played on the wing for the Indiana Pacers in the NBA playoffs this year? A rookie, getting big minutes. Yeah, Ben Shepard. Where did Ben Shepard play in college? Yeah, he played at Belmont. Do you recall who got drafted by the Cleveland Cavaliers in the first round of the 2019 draft? Do you recall who was out of the league without ever playing a game in the league? Has Dylan Windler really never played a game? I don't think so. Uh, I bet he's at least gotten <laughs> one in the <laughs> My point is Belmont <laughs> actually has produced good players. Like these other, like the, there's a lot, I think there's a pretty big difference from the Missouri Valley compared to the big South and the CAA. Um, was William and Mary, I don't know. They might've even been in a lower conference aside from the CAA when Pierce I apologize. Playing, Dylan but... Wendler has played in 101 career games. Let's go. Um, Respect my Belmont Bruins. He's played in 20 in the last two years. Good number. A good solid round number. Shout out to Dylan. But the Valley, they've produced good up transfers recently from Marcus Domas to Lance Jones to Rink Most. It seems like they, they there's a smoother transition from guys coming out of that league. But Tyson was they, was an OVC commit. Belmont's new Missouri. Belmont's new to the Valley. Like he was an OVC commit. But he played in the Valley last year. He did he lit up the Valley. So I, I don't think he's going to average 17 a game again. He probably won't shoot 46 and a half percent from three. Uh, I think those numbers, I mean, if he can shoot 40%, that I'll be ecstatic. Uh, but I would even add, aside from just him shooting, he looks big. He's 6'8". I think he's listed at 6'7", uh, 6'8". He's got long arms. He he looks taller than Vin Allen Lubin, like when I've seen him in person. <laughs> um, but uh, that bodes that's well like, for UNC. Yeah, but, well, we're not, we're not talking about the front court. Um, but both Justin Pierce and Christian Keeling immediately look small when they went on the on the court for they Carolina. Um, and Tyson, he he attempted more two point shots last year than threes. Like that was one of the biggest things that stuck out to me when I looked at his statistical profile was that this dude's not just a, a shooter. He can do a little bit off the bounce. He can get to the rim a little bit. He can cook cook a little bit in the mid-range. So, um, yeah, I think he's going to be a really, really solid piece. I don't, I don't buy him as a brady Manic one-for-one comparison. I mean, Manic was the best shooter in the country the last month of his season. Mm -hmm. uh, but, yeah, I think Tyson will be a really solid starter for this team. If he is, UNC should be a Final Four team. Or at least have those aspirations, right? Um, I just have I just have questions. I just have questions about the ability to handle everything else aside from just like your shooting skill and the ability to shoot against um, much tougher defenses and much different kinds of athletes, right? We'll we'll see what happens there. Um, it is just a two man group. I don't know if there's a like a general consensus strength or weakness among the two. If there's a weakness for me, it's just you have a freshman and an up transfer. Can mm -hmm. they can, can they prove it the ACC? I'm with you on that. I would say the strength is Drake Powell and the the upside that he just becomes like yeah. that dude from the start. And you, I mean, you got to find a way to get him the starting lineup. Ian Jackson is the higher rated freshman, the higher rated five star. But there is a chance that Drake Powell is their best non RJ Davis player by February. I agree with that. I, I would be shocked if Ian 
Jackson doesn't score more than Drake Powell. Like I, I think yeah. Jackson probably scores 15 a game, 14, 15 a game. Powell to me, nine to 10 points a game, but I, I think he makes such a big impact on defense. I think he uses his size and athleticism to help the rebounding department. Um, and I said it on another one of our videos, my bet, someone called me out for the YouTube comments. You don't know what you're talking about. Commenter. Uh, he, when I said that the best UNC lineup is going to be the four guards or the four guards slash wings with Drake Powell at the four around whichever big can best protect the rim and rebound. Um, so, yeah, I think Powell is going to be closing games. I, I'm so high on this kid. Everything I've heard, read, watched indicates that he's going to be a really good, uh, really good college player and a good pro, even if he does not like the, the craziest statistical stat sheet suffer. I'll say that. So, Kate Tyson's not going to be closing games? In my in my theory, no, he's not. But he's going to be doing his damage early on, knocking down threes. <laughs> okay, just not good enough to be on the court at the end of the game. All right. Um, well, let, let's let's get to projecting the production for these guys uh, next season. We'll start with Drake Powell. We're both high on what he potentially can be. What does that look like, though, from a statistical perspective? Yeah, I'd say nine points, five boards, one and a half assists. I like that. Excuse me. I like that. I think we go with like two and a half stocks as well. Like mm-hmm. I, I think, I, I think done, he's yeah, I like uh, a, a high level defender. I think his numbers would be higher if he did not come off the bench. Mm-hmm. But I think again, I think that's you're not replacing Kido, Archer Davis, or Ian Jackson really in that lineup. So he he's kind of left there. Kate Tyson. What are we looking at? He's averaging thirty a game. I, I think Kate also averages nine a game, nine, nine and a half. Um, I'm going to say he shoots 38 and a half percent from three. I think he also is going to, he's going to have to get like UNC needs him to get five boards at, at least. Like he might get five boards just because no one else is like, they, that's the biggest weakness for this UNC team. I think is there's just not really much of a proven rebounder there. Tyson had pretty good rebounding numbers at Belmont, like a, I want to say is 19% defensive rebounding rate, maybe 70% somewhere in that range. Um, so he's done it, but yeah, it's like you said, it's an uptick in competition. Yeah. I, I think the rebounding number starts with a four and I think that's a problem for North Carolina. And also I, I, I think you're probably spot on with the projections for him about eight or nine is about where I had him too. And I had him sub 40 from three. So like around 38, 39, but if, if you are relying on a shooter, to be 38 39 and that changes your offense i did i just question the, the impact that's going to have we'll see i did that you know harrison ingram got by with that because of his defense and playmaking and the ability and rebounding to like, harrison and rebounding. like yeah like, like he was able to do everything right k tyson is not that kind of player that's why i yeah. think they look at him the brady manic type thing um be interesting to see but but north carolina the strength is your guards strength is drake powell's upside if you get Great seasons out of Powell uh, and Kay Tyson. Looking pretty good about uh, going back to San Antonio. It's that time, Cart. Football season is approaching, and you know exactly what that means. It means that we are both going to bet and bet a lot with our friends at MyBookie. Yeah, MyBookie is the best and premier sports book used by us over here at Sleepers Media. They have everything you need, Greg, with football season approaching. There's nothing I love more than looking at a nice Saturday slate and even leading into a little bit of Sunday dipping into the NFL, but there's no better place to do it than with my bookie. And I think we got a great offer for the folks over uh, at my bookie. If they want to tap in with us, we sure as hell do. And I'm going to tell you all about that offer, but first I'm going to tell you a little bit more about the great benefits of betting with my bookie. My bookie is safe, secure. Most importantly, when you win, you get paid quick. If the first two legs of your parlay hit cash out early, use those funds on another bet or let it ride for a chance at a bigger payday with football season coming. They're going to have a bunch of great things in store for you. Whether you're looking to bet futures, game lines, player props, all of it is available with our friends at MyBookie. And you can get a 50% deposit match up to $1,000. There's a link in this description, promo code SLEEPERS. With MyBookie, make sure you get that 50% deposit match. Use those funds. Maximize your chances of winning as football season gets here. And we'll be there with you every single step of the way. 